Falk out. Bolger gets the start against a four-man Chicago defensive front. Bruce is the man in motion, and they begin the game with Gordon. And Gordon is able to slip Erlacher's initial tackle and then is taken down as we take a look at the Chicago defense. Philip Daniels, George. Brian Robinson, Fresno State. Keith Trailer, Central Oklahoma. Alex Brown, Florida. Roosevelt Colvin, Purdue. Brian Erlacher, New Mexico. Bobby Howard, Notre Dame. R.W. McQuarters, The Oklahoma State University. Mike Green, Northwestern State, Louisiana. Michael Brown, Nebraska. Jerry Azuma, New Hampshire. There is Marshall Falk, who figures to play next week. He was questionable coming into tonight's game, but they put him in civvies. Should play next week at Washington. Second and ten, and Bolger nearly gets sacked and then throws under pressure, and it's incomplete, intended for Ricky Prohl. A lot yeah, of pressure gonna, that time. They're going to test Mark Bolger right away. They came in on second down with a 4 1 6, four defensive linemen, one linebacker, six defensive backs, and they overload the right side. The right side of the defense, the left side of the offense. They overload on this side, and here's where they bring the pressure. And you see they get free right there and he's right at Bulger's left leg so that he can't step up. Then he just had to throw the ball away. But that kind of tells you what the Bears how they want to start. They're going to put some pressure on him. Now they look like they're going to play coverage. Now they rush five. Three linemen two backers and it is caught out in the flat by Gordon and Earl Acker chases him down but not until he picks up 17 to the Chicago 48 yard line and that was your who would have thought you know, Mark Bulger right away to Lamar Gordon they need a big play on third down and and he goes he goes to the rookie from North Dakota State right here he comes down he's looking downfield looking downfield then he comes to his outlet out here to the right Lamar Gordon that's the thing that impresses me about Bulger how he can get back in the pocket and be so calm about the whole thing. It's amazing he didn't throw a pass in an NFL game until a month ago. Looks like a 10 year veteran. Three receivers set to the left. And on a draw, they give it to Gordon through the middle, picks up one to the Chicago 47 yard line. Gordon out of Little North Dakota State. He's a kid out of Milwaukee. Charlie Army, their great personnel man here in St. Louis. Used to coach at North Dakota State. Lovey Smith, the defensive coordinator, has a lot of friends up there. They did their homework on him, and they said, you know what? This kid's really good. He might be the best running back in the draft, they felt. Well, and, and he's a tough guy, and he and he rims hard. I know last week they brought him in the game. Marshall Falk was hurt, and they needed a spark. You know, everyone was kind of down when Marshall went out, and this guy came in and gave him a life. Second and nine, and Bulger goes deep, and it is incomplete. Crowd wants a flag, doesn't get it. Intended for Tory Holt, blanketed by Jerry Azuma. You know, that's one of the matchups we're going to see all night is Tory Holt against Jerry Azuma. Although Azuma does have help from Mike Brown. See, he can play underneath. In fact, he grabs a little because he has a safety coming over the top. So he can play tight and he can play underneath Holt a little and get between Tory Holt, the receiver, and Mark Bolger, the quarterback. Third down and nine now on the opening drive of the game. Couple of minutes in. Azuma on Holt. Now talking about that matchup. We'll see it all night as Bolger retreats, sets up in the pocket beautifully, throws over the middle, caught over the middle by Isaac Bruce to a chorus of Bruce to the 26 yard line, 21 yards. And Isaac Bruce runs that pattern, and the Rams run that pattern better than anyone in football. This is the one that you have to be able to throw the deep end. You see, he gets the inside move right there. Then he just comes straight across about 15 to 17 yards. Watch Mark Bulger here. I mean, you talk about a quick release. I mean, that's in slow motion, but that ball is boom. It's up there and right out of his hands. This kid, I swear, he's something special. I mean, you, you look at me as skinny arms, you wonder where it comes from, but he has some stuff in there. Went to the same high school in Pittsburgh as did Dan Marino. Throws it out here. Beautiful on the money to Bruce inside the five. It'll be first and goal for St. Louis. Yep. Isaac Bruce ran the in, and then he comes right back. They expect the in again, and he runs the corner. You saw Warner on the headset. He's calling the plays in after March calls the play. See, here he goes. He starts to the inside, and then he comes back out. And I'll tell you, that's at cover two. Isaac Bruce gets between the corner and the safety. 
and, and Kurt Bulger throws and Bulger throws a perfect pass. Bobby Howard, the linebacker, trailing on the coverage. Four-man front for Chicago. First and goal, they give it to Gordon, and that's Erlacher, who couldn't take him down, but he stops his momentum to the extent that he is stopped at the three-yard line after a pickup of one. You know, the way Mark Bulger's looked on, on this drive here, he kind of looked like Rich Gannon did last Monday night. Big Blosh is trying to figure out what he has to do to stop him. He's, he's tried everything. He's used the, uh, the man coverage. He's used the, the the blitz. He's used the three man line. He has really mixed up his defenses and his coverage. And Mark Bulger has taken advantage of all of them. Rams a move from their own 35 for the Chicago three. And on second down, Gordon through the middle. And he'll take the pile to the one before the whistle ends the play. It'll be third down and goal from the one. Erlacher 54. He'll be in the middle of everything tonight. He's all over the field. Yeah, and you know, and he reads, he reads the guards, and he reads, he reads the back, and and he's going to, if they can just hold the blockers off him, Brian Erlacher is going to get to the play. Rams have scored four touchdowns this season on their first drive of a game. The Steelers lead the league with five. Meanwhile, Chicago has not scored a single point this season on any opening drive. Third down and goal from the one. And then a give to Conwell, the tight end. They love to run that play. Touchdown. Ernie Conwell, who scored last week, scores on the opening drive tonight. Nothing. Rams scoring on the opening drive. Now Chris Chandler, the quarterback. And the Bears' first offensive play is a Chandler pass over the middle, pulled in by Marty Booker. Nice start. And again, out to the 49-yard line. Marty Booker, one of the top receivers in the whole NFL. You watch, he just starts up, and and we and we said that you know that Chris Chandler has to get rid of the ball quickly, and that's a pattern that you can. It's what you call a skinny post. You just go up and to the inside, and you just go back, and and, and the minute that back foot drops, Chris Chandler lets it go to Marty Booker. Booker caught a hundred balls last year. Leads the team this season, 52. Nine games in. Anthony Thomas across the 50 to the 48. Let's take a look at the Chicago offensive 11. Chris Chandler, Washington. Anthony Thomas, Michigan. Damon Sheldon, Sacramento State. Marty Booker, Northeast Louisiana. Dez White, Georgia Tech. John Davis, Emporia State. Mark Colombo, Boston College. Mike Gandy, Notre Dame. Kevin Doggins, Texas A&M, Kingsville. Chris Valario, Indiana, University of Pennsylvania. James Williams, Cheney University. James Big Cat Williams, 12th year, young left side of the line. Though Colombo, their number one pick out of Boston College. Gandy, the left guard, second year out of Notre Dame. Chandler fires, and it is incomplete, intended for 88 Marcus Robinson. Let's take a look at the Ram D. Leonard Little, Tennessee. Ryan Pickett, The Ohio State University. Jeff Scalina, Purdue University. Grant Wistrom, Nebraska. Robert Thomas, UCLA. Jamie Duncan, Vanderbilt. Tommy Pollard. Florida State. Travis Fisher, Central Florida. Adam Archuleta, Arizona State. Kim Herring, Penn State. Red Bly, North Carolina. There is Olin Cruz. There's a flag down before the next snap. Illegal substitution. 12 men in the huddle. Five yards. Still third down. And I'll make it third down and 11. Cruz, the center, we just saw him, was a Pro Bowl center, had an appendectomy. On Monday, so he's out, and they hope to have him back next Sunday against Detroit and Champaign. Yeah, he played last Sunday and and didn't feel well, and then after the game, they checked him out, checked him out, and found out that he had appendicitis problem. They operated on him on uh, Monday, and there was there was some thought that he may be able to play tonight, but now they go with the ex buck Kevin Doggins. Now third and eleven, Chandler out of the shotgun. Rams pressure him. And it's a little dump off and almost intercepted, almost picked by Tioka Jackson. Saw it on that first drive, but he's been, he's been playing like that for a month. Good protection, good fake, long game. Conwell, who scored the touchdown, off and running to the Chicago 40 from the eight across midfield to the 40, 52 yards. 
and a first down of course at the 40 and they may have been a flag at the end of the play. This is what Mark Bulger sees you see you get a play pass to look now that held the linebackers and bunched everyone up then you get your tight end right down the middle and you just have to throw it over a linebacker. Rosie Colvin number 59 is the closest bear there. He knew when he had to play pass he knew he had him held then he just had, he just kind of lobbed that ball up there in Ernie Conwell. And here comes the penalty it's going to be against McQuarters. Oh that's that old second guy isn't yeah, it. Yeah Bruce had him Bruce had him first and McQuarters hits him gets a personal foul and tack on 15 to the 52. Yep exactly right. Yeah. You know that was a heck of a play though I mean you know you do that against an aggressive defense on a run down first down they're planning there for run the linebackers are in there tight give them play pass. Here's Gordon subbing for four minimal gain. You know the thing that impressed me about Mark Bulger is he can he can make all the throws and the, you know and you have to here's here's the type of throws you have to do if you're going to play for the Rams you have to throw that deep in and we've already seen him do that then you have to be able to move and throw that comeback for that play to the sideline and then of course you have to be able to throw it in the corner because they run that better than anyone and then you have to be able to throw the up and, and if you watch Mark Bulger in this last month. He has made all those throws. In fact, he started this game making them all. Right on the money. Second and ten. A little toss, a little trickery. They give the ball to Torrey Hall on a reverse. A first down. And he takes it all the way down to the ten yard line. Stopped there by Mike Brown. So Torrey Hall taking the handoff, and Mike March is at it again. And I'll tell you, he, he mixes everything up. I mean, he's done everything. He's thrown screen passes, he's thrown deep. He's thrown short. He's thrown play pass. He's run to the tight end. Here again, he starts to reverse. It starts off a counter. Then it goes back to Torrey Holt. Watch Mark Bulger here. He's out here leading. Not not the biggest of blockers, but not a bad block out there. First rush of the season for Holt. Of course, Conwell, the tight end, has already rushed for a touchdown. First and ten at the 11-yard line. Bulger, great protection, guns it. That's incomplete. Broken up at the three, intended for Brandon Manu Maliuna. And what amazes me, John, is you go with a kid quarterback in his fifth start, a rookie running back, and yet Mike March has his system, has his scheme, doesn't change anything. No, and that's what he says. I mean, he knows one way to play. In fact, we were talking to Greg Blasher about it, and he said that Mike March has 124 formations. He said they've taken it off, and they play 120 formations, even with the third quarterback. And he said it's it, it's really tough to defend. He said he's so impressed with these coaches the way they teach all this stuff. Here's a new one right here. Yep. Five wide receivers. Five wide outs. They call this the termite formation. And Bolger loses the ball at the 15 yard line. Roosevelt Coleman caused the fumble and Chicago has it. So the Rams marching down the field looking for certain it would be 14 to nothing. Instead Chicago gets the exact break it needs. Football. Chicago, after the Alex Brown recovery created by Colvin, who gets a sack and a forced fumble on first down, Leon Johnson is in the backfield, and Leon is taken down by Leonard Little. They start with Anthony Thomas, who was a thousand yard back as a rookie, but they want to get Johnson in the game. They did early last week and do again tonight. So that's the thing that Dick Geron was talking about last night is a is a change of pace. He really likes Leon Johnson, and he said that. He would like to get him more touches but somewhere to get more touches your offense has to do something you have to get first downs you have to have the ball and you can want to do a lot of these things but if you don't have the ball and get first down then you don't have enough plays to do any of them. So Thomas out at least for a series. Second and nine. Rams showing blitz and here they come and Chandler pressure from behind gets it off. And completes it, but for a very short gain to Marty Booker as the pressure was put on, as it will be all night by Grant Wistrom. Yeah, and it was it was from his backside. It was one of those zone dogs. Watch Adam Archuleta. He's a he's a safety, and you're gonna see him come up, come up, come up, and try and hit it right as a ball snap. He was he's a little late, but that was the overload, and they got that pressure from Chris Chandler's backside. Watch it right here, it'll come from his left side right there. They have an overload there. They, they had one extra defender to that left side. Doggins took out Archuleta. 
But Winston forced the issue. Third down and seven. Noisy Dome out of the shotgun. Chandler throws. Booker over the middle. And Marty Booker out to the 26 and the flag at the end of the play after for the moment he picks up a first down. It's too bad that Marty Booker hasn't had some some better players around him because you know he's as close to you know one Personal guy foul. doing a lot of things. Face mask 15 yards number 32 defense. First down. Gray blind as you can get. I mean you know you wonder how Marty Booker instead of you know ended up with Chicago how he would be if he were in this Ram offense because he can make all the plays himself. You know who he needed is Sid Luckman on the other side. Do you believe Sid Luckman no. still holds the Bears record no. for most touchdown passes and, and passing yardage? No, that's, you know, why some teams can never get a quarterback like the Bears. They can never get a quarterback, and teams like the Rams, they just come, they just start falling off trees into but the Rams. It's amazing. From the 41 yard line. And that's thrown out of bounds. You go back. With, with the Rams, of course, you have Norm Van Brocklin and Bob Waterfield and through the years. And then with the Bears, there was Luckman who played in the 40s mainly. Billy Wade would be next, another guy who played 40 years ago. And then McMahon is third in 67. And then Ed Brown, he played, he played in 1954. So so you're right. And and you wonder why and it happens to some teams. Some teams can get running backs, some teams can't. Some teams can get great defensive linemen and linebackers, some teams can't. The Bears are a team that just can't seem to get a quarterback. And you saw Jim Miller, who would be the starter, but he can't because of tendonitis in his elbow. But is available to play if needed tonight, as he did last week. Fake to Johnson. Then Chandler's going to pack it in and gets necktied at the 46 yard line by Brian Young, the tackle. Well, that's the last thing that Chandler needs in this game is to get necktied. I mean, he came in, remember last week, he got it on a quarterback sneak. And it was a short yardage play, and he took a quarterback sneak, and he took a shot to the head, and then and it went to his neck. And he said his neck was, you know, really stiff on Wednesday. He started to loosen up, but when we talked to him last night, he said his neck is still stiff. Chris, of course, has been in and out of the lineup through a lot of his career. 15 years. This is his seventh different team, and he has started at one point or another for each of them. Third down and four. And Chandler falls down. They have tripped on his center's foot and then gets taken down behind the line of scrimmage by Westerman Young. Oh, and that's the thing. He knows he has to get rid of that ball. And that's exactly what it was. His center is Kevin Dawkins. And you're going to see it. He's going to step on his foot. Watch Chris Chandler here as a ball snap. Watch Dawkins right there. He just stepped on his left foot. He got the right one out of there. And then it was the off foot or the left foot that Dawkins stepped on. So Doggins taking the place of the Pro Bowler Crutes. That forces a punt. Maynard to kick. Terrence Wilkins is back. Chicago looking as if they'll fake it, and they will. And it's Maynard with a first down out of the back of the playbook. And why not? Seven straight losses, and it's a first down for Chicago. You know, that was the old bootleg play. Remember in the old days where you used to fake and then put the ball on your hip? That time, Maynard. Took the ball and he put it behind his back. He put it behind his back and held it there for a while. Watch him as he gets it here. He's going to fake the reverse and then he puts the ball behind his back. You see, he hides it back there. Then he fakes the kick. Then he gets out there to the left and there's not a Ram defender out there. Maynard playing in his 90th game in the league. It's the first time he's ever run for a game. You have to call that something when you take the ball and hide it behind your back. That has to be something. Street ball. That will put Thomas back in the game. He has a first down, and with good, tough running, takes it to the 19 behind a Doggins block. I remember when Jimmy Johnson was coaching the Dallas Cowboys, and he used to call those plays on special teams momentum changers. And he felt when the other team had the momentum, to get the momentum back, you had to get it through special teams. And that's exactly what the Bears did on that play. They were they didn't have the momentum. They had lost it someplace. They had to get it back. It was a gutsy call. But it was a heck of a play. Dick Geron figuring out why not. Two and seven, seven straight defeats. Try to get back into the game. Down by a touchdown from the 18-yard line. But look out. 
because here comes James Whitley back up corner off the corner for the sack and, and he was there and that's that six defensive back package and no one saw Whitley at all there was no one picking him up no one came out there and, and missed him or anything he was just out there he was unaccounted for he was never accounted for and we're just going to see that he's he's standing out here and then he's just going to he's just going to come you see he comes right here they all block down no one looks no one sees him and the first guy that realizes he's coming is Chris Chandler five yard sack a little over a minute to go in the period fake Chandler almost gets sacked dumps it off as a Ram had his shirt and there's a flag down at the 29 yard line thrown by Jerry Austin. Personal foul. Look the passer. 91 defense. Is First down. Leonard Little. Well you know one thing this Ram defense is going after Chris Chandler. I mean they feel that that by going after him that they can get him out of the game and there and you can see him blitzing more rushing more and they get this type of thing and they want to get him out of the game. And you can see here they're they're all going after I mean they're going after him like 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 this is something uh, there's some sugar on something here. Lovey Smith the defensive coordinator came over from Tampa Bay last year to really turn the Ram defense around. This year playing not quite as well as they did last season but still pretty good especially lately. Yeah, and and they don't blitz a lot but they're blitzing the Bears more tonight than normal. But when they do blitz it's in this area inside the 20 yard line. First down from the 12. Thomas hit hard after a gain of one. Archuleta among those and Travis Fisher as well. That Archuleta is something isn't he. I mean he's he's a, a linebacker in the in the body of a defensive back. And you just see that, that he'll play that position anytime that Levy Smith can bring Adam Archuleta up to this area in that linebacker area. That's where he wants him because he has such a nose for the ball. And then when he gets there, watch him unload. I mean, he does something about it when he gets there. One of their number one picks, they had three last year out of Arizona State. Thomas is the tailback here on second down and 10. Take to Thomas Chandler under pressure Chandler gets sacked by Grant Wistrom at the 23 he's had a great quarter and a flag is down it's going to be against the Bears and it was back here it was back on this right side away from the bootleg one of the things that John Chupin and the Bears is trying to do is move Chris Chandler around. The fake was to the right, and that's where the the flag area was. Chandler went to the John left. Block on the right tackle and and back. That goal is declined. Third down. On the right tackle and back, whatever that means. James what, Williams. What it means is James Williams is okay. He can be engaged, but watch James Williams. He'll be right here. Now, if he's engaged, if he if he has a guy engaged, if he's blocking a guy, then someone else can't come in and chop him when he's blocking him. Yep, he just went right out of the picture. It was over on the right side. That's what I said. The ball was on the left, and the penalty was on the right. And that will be the end of the first quarter with Chicago driving. John Madden and Melissa Stark in St. Louis as we start the second quarter on Monday Night Football. The Chicago Bears trailing seven nothing and have a third down and 20 now and they've been coming to Chandler often and hard and they're going to come big on this time but I think the Bears are in their empty backfield I think they have to throw this one into the end zone I'd go for a touchdown here third down and 20 Chandler to Robinson makes a nice move but then the Rams are able to converge and stop him after a very short game and setting up a field goal attempt for Edinger. Out off the field, holding his side, should be okay. There's Erlacher looking at the Ram offense, going to work here now as it's caught out at the 31 yard line by Lamar Gordon, and then Gordon is run out of bounds at the 36. Bolger's father, Jim, was a college quarterback, played under Ara Parsegian at Notre Dame about 30 years ago now in the leasing business in Pittsburgh and here tonight and when you talk to Mark Bulger you know, you, you know I was asking where he got that quick release you know because he went to the same high school as Dan Marino and you know and he's been a big Notre Dame fan all his life and 
I think he expected one of those names, and the name was his dad. He said his dad got him started with all his fundamentals. This is James Hodgins picking up two. Interesting road that he took out of West Virginia. He had a good junior year, not so hot in the senior season with injuries. Picked in the sixth round by the Saints. Never took a snap in training camp. Then he came to the Rams for a couple of weeks on the practice squad. Went to Atlanta on their practice squad. Then came back here last year, suited up as the third quarterback. Didn't play in any game. And then, of course, after Warner got hurt and then Jamie Martin couldn't make it, in week six, here he came and he's 4 0. Now today in the NFL, it seems like quarterbacks come from anywhere and everywhere, don't they? And on third and one, breaking through is Erlacher. Big play to stop the rookie Gordon and force a punt. You know, the Bears haven't had a lot of bright spots, but if you have to say, where's the one bright spot? It's this guy right here, number 54. I mean, he's fun to talk to, he's fun to watch play, and he has fun playing. I mean, he read that perfectly. Now you can skate down the line or you can go in when you find a hole you can take that hole and pursue from the Rams side of the line of scrimmage and that's exactly what Brian Urlacher did step right through that hole of course he was everything at New Mexico receiver safety linebacker running back you name it Burgers kick fielded at the 16 yard line by Leon Johnson and the Rams converge on Johnson at the 24 yard line. Three minutes into the second quarter. From the 24 yard line, and we've got some news coming up here as Leon Johnson is the running back in this set. And they give it to Johnson. Stop for no game, but the big story with the Rams. Melissa, what do you know? Well, Al, another update on Mark Bulger. Apparently, the sprained ligament in his index finger, the right index finger, is worse than they thought. They just went in, took him in for x rays in the locker room. We'll keep you posted on those results. I saw Mike Marks look over at Kurt Warner and say, Get ready. Yeah, and he's getting ready right now. Yeah, here's Bulger's injury again. Watch that. You see, he gets his right finger. Rosie Colvin is coming in. He goes to get the ball, and in doing so, he gets his right index finger. Second and ten. Rams back off the blitz, rush four, and the ball is caught over the middle. They go to the tight end. That's John Davis, and that should be a first down for Chicago. You know, when I was looking down here in the Rams sideline and watching Kurt Warner warm up, you knew that he was warming up to go in the game. He wasn't just standing up to play catch. And now this is an interesting thing. You know, I was talking to Kurt Warner the other day, and and I was asking him. He said, "Well, the doctors thought he should have one more week rest, and that's why he didn't start tonight." Well the question I had then and I still have if you can't start if you should have one week's more rest what happens if you have to play as a second quarterback. Well Mark March didn't want to have to risk starting him tonight as Chandler gets great protection but then throws a pass that he's lucky wasn't picked off by Dre Bly intended for Marty Booker. Oh, and Booker had Dre Bly too. Had Chris Chandler been able to get about five more yards on that ball, that would have been a big play. Dre Bly figures. <laughs> He's I punishing gotta, himself. I got to warm up. Had that, what time a high school kid? I, I get into that. Here's here's Dre Bly right here. And you watch Marty Booker. He's going to get a step. You see, he has two or three steps on him right there. If that ball was out in front, that would have been a big, big play for the Bears. Dre Bly is punishing himself doing push up. Sailor, give me 50. Second and 10 at the 35 yard line. Johnson, X Jet. 43, third and two, more on Bolger. What do you know, Melissa? Well, Al, he said that he was losing strength in the finger, that it's definitely swelling up, and that he couldn't feel the ball. So that's what we know at this point. We'll let you know the uh, update on the X rays as soon as we get them. He's back in the locker room. Warner ready to come in when the Rams get the football with 10 15 remaining in the first half. And that was the biggest thing, too, with Kurt Warner, Al. He was talking about getting his strength back in his grip of the ball. That was the last thing to come back. Bulger leading the league in pass rating. Warner, of course, is the all time pass rating leader. Chandler deep and it is incomplete. He tried to go to the running back, the fullback Stanley Pritchett, who caught a touchdown pass last week. Archuleta covering on the play. That was a good play. Kurt Warner since 
This game on the 29th of September on the shelf highest pass rating in the history of the league 99.9 with 99 touchdown passes gets sacked and what a welcome back that is Keith trailer is the welcome wagon and I'll tell you when he's a welcome wagon he is going to smother you Keith trailer you know that big tackle that usually stuffs a run but can also move in fact he was a linebacker before he grew into a tackle but watch him come down the line he starts out right here he was on a stunt and he's just running right down the line with Kurt Warner he finds a little hole right there and then he does a flop job on him Big defensive tackles will always flop on little quarterbacks. 6 2 and 340 is trailer. On second and 17, Warner now swings it over the middle, and that's incomplete. Trying to get it into Torrey Holt. Let's go back to a couple of hours before the game when Warner came out to warm up. Well, you can still see that that finger's bothering him. Watch him. He throws the ball, and then he'll grab the finger. And, and the big thing is the grip. You see, every time. He would throw the ball, then he'd grab that little finger. In that little finger right there, he has four pins. And so he broke it down this way, and he broke it across this way. And and you have to be rushed. I mean, he really didn't even practice with the first offense at all this week. Last year, he was bothered by a thumb that bothered him all season long as Bruce makes the catch. But doesn't get the first. And John, a lot of people felt that even though Warner said, I'm fine, that that thumb was still bothering him earlier this season. Well, you know, something was bothering him earlier this season. I know that, you know, I talked to him and, and talked to coaches, and they said, no, there was nothing bothering him. But he wasn't throwing earlier in the season like Kurt Warner of a couple of years ago. And they say that he always throws those through, through those wobbly spirals. I don't believe that. I always thought he threw a very accurate tight spiral. So did I, but he was throwing a lot of ducks through the first three weeks of the year. Berger, short punt, 39 yard line. Leon Johnson in the Rams territory. And then he's taken down by Art Chaletta, who's all over the field at the 32. So the Bears will set up shop in Rams territory Sunday to Monday night as the as the second Monday night game because the Marlins had to play game seven of the World Series in Miami the night before. What do we call that a rump rump game? <laughs> this is caught by the tight end Davis rump game and went to about eight percent of the country. You know, my whole life, I've never, I've never coached in a rump game. I, that, I coached every other kind of game at every level, but I never coached in a rump game. You never coached in a rump game. You, you haven't broadcast too many rump games either. No, 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 never broadcast. I've never seen. I don't think I've ever watched a rump game. But I'll tell you, you know, you know, you know the Bears have, have made a couple big plays on special teams. Now this is their second time they're in scoring position. The first one was off that fake punt. And the second one was this one here off that punt return. Second down and six in the 29 yard line. Toss back to Thomas. Archuleta comes up, whiffs, but then the Rams are able to corral him at the 27. Now for the Bears, you talk about the difference between last year and this year. They got every break last year, not very many injuries. Totally opposite. Last year, eight and one in games decided by eight points or less this year, two and five. They won both games in overtime last year, 0 and 2 this year. 31 players with one or more starts last year. Now through nine games, the Bears have started 41 players, by far the most in the league this year, and already a franchise record in this, their 10th game. Third down and four. From the 27-yard line, Chandler under pressure. Down he goes. The Rams have another sack. This one will go to Damian Lewis. From the 18. Again with Marshall Falk inactive tonight. Fake it to Gordon, throw it to Gordon. And the North Dakota State rookie, the third round draft choice, gets his helmet taken off as he moves it out to the 23 yard line. The bang by Erlacher. Take a look at those numbers. Remember, Warner came out of nowhere in 99, won his first four games. But the, the numbers are. Obviously very impressive on both counts and fairly similar. The Warner's pass rating was off the charts. Well, Bulger's 107. I mean, that's that's not bad there, but you know, they both started with pretty good teams. I mean, that's that's part of the secret. I think these guys coming from nowhere. Gordon on second and four. 
up to the 31 yard line. First down. I mean, you think of the Rams lose the Super Bowl, winless preseason, 0 and 5. Warner's hurt, and Falk was shaky early on. I mean, it, in week five, even Jack Grubman couldn't have made a cockamamie buy recommendation on this team. But here they are. But but the guy that pulled him out of this cockamamie thing, cockamamie or cockamamie? Mamie. Cockamamie thing <laughs> is Marshall Falk. You know, I think that great players, as I said, they play great in big games, but they also help dig you out of holes when you get in one. From the 31 on first down and 10. Bulger throws right on the money. Ernie Conwell, who has scored the only touchdown in the game. And the, and the, and, and the snap comes right up on that right hand. And that can be pretty traumatic. Makes it second and ten on what had been a first and ten play. And then Bolger flings it out, and that's incomplete. And that's off the mark as well to Tory Holt. Yeah, yeah, again, anytime it's that right hand, whether it's the thumb or the finger, you see, his right hand is right up here. This is his left hand. So the ball is going to be brought up and jammed right into that right hand. You see? It comes up there, so he has to take the brunt of the snap the rest of the game. So that's where you would say that that the thing should calm down. But taking those snaps and taking that ball right on that index finger, you can't you can't let it calm down. Third and ten. Timmerman moved. Third and fifteen, and now. Bulger has to take a timeout, so all of that now. Third down and long, and Bulger's going to air it out, but into traffic, and it's intercepted by Mike Brown. That one fluttered, and Brown picks it off for Chicago. Well, that's that's one of those where you can say, well, that's that's as good as a punt, you know, and it probably was. It was it was third and long anyway, and if you don't complete it, you're going to have to have to punt it. Here's what he's doing right here and you see Mike Brown he's just a safety he's sitting way back here he's just waiting for it he shows up right there the ball is over Isaac Bruce head right into Mike Brown's arm. See, he just let that one go and that's a tough one to, to throw when that safety is sitting in the middle of the field. In other words were you throwing that to Isaac Bruce or were you throwing that one to Mike Brown. But unless he felt that and what the heck if I don't complete it we're going to have to punt anyway and that'll put him down there in the 20 yard line. It's the equivalent of a 47 yard punt they were at their own 26 to go to the other 27. That's probably what Mark Bolton is saying right now. Well I knew I saw the safety there I just threw it to him knew we'd tackle and we don't have to punt. Mitch Berger is saying what are you what are you talking about and a punt at 57 yards. From the 27 yard line first down Bears. Showing a lot of resiliency tonight. Up to the 31 yard line goes Anthony Thomas. Big play, of course, in the game was Roosevelt Coleman with a, a sack, a forced fumble. Chicago looked like they were going to go down 14 0 early. March down the field, get a field goal, get another one, 7 6. Well, and the big thing, you know, we were talking earlier, you know, and John Shoot, the offensive coordinator, was saying that we'd like to get Chris Chandler off to a good start. You know, get him through that first quarter. Get him into the second quarter of the game and still be close, and that's exactly what the Bears have done. Chandler, six out of 11, 51 yards, but he's been sacked four times. Gives it to Thomas. Thomas squirts to the 35, a couple of yards shy of the first. Leonard Little with the tackle, third down upcoming. Yeah, but the thing is, I think this whole Bear offense is starting to, to calm down now, and we talked about how when someone comes in, they've lost seven in a row, and 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 they don't have any confidence and you want to jump on them right away the Rams kind of did that then pulled in the throttle and now you can just feel that as this game goes on that the Bears are getting confident. This guy always has confidence right here. I'd take him if, if I had a choice and say we want to pick up pick him. The defense rests at least for the moment on third down and two and they give the ball to Thomas and the second year back out of Michigan is able to pick up the first down Anthony Thomas second round draft choice broke in with a bang last year the a train came out of Ann Arbor and with eleven hundred eighty three yards seven touchdowns helped guide the team to a a thirteen and three mark this year though Thomas 
averaging only 3.3 a carry, John, and the Bears are last in yards per carry. Well, you know, last year they had the same five guys started every game in the offensive line. This year they haven't had that. I mean, they have a rookie left tackle, a first year guy playing left guard, a new center tonight. And a play here where Marty Booker, who threw a touchdown pass last week, throws incomplete. It was tough for Booker to get loose that time. But last week, Marty was able to hit Marcus Robinson for a touchdown against New England. That takes us to the two minute warning. Chicago with the ball, but the Rams have the lead. 7 6 in St. Louis. The quarterback injury situation around the league. As well, coming up at the half. Two minutes to the half, second down and 10. Chicago from the 38 yard line. Rams up by a point. Quick flip. Caught John Davis, tight end, 48 yard line, close to a first. Yeah, I think Chris Chandler there, John Shoup saw something. What the Rams are doing on their blitzes, they're, 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 they're bringing their zone dogs, but they're overloading one side or the other. That time they overloaded the right side of the bear offense and you can just see Chris Chandler got rid of it quickly to that side. See here's the overload over here. So you get one more rusher than they have blockers. So what do you have to do. You have to get back quickly and you have to get the ball out of your hands. Chris Chandler did exactly that. He doesn't want those rib pads to do much work tonight. Chandler's kind of settled down this entire offense. There he is in the first half, and, and we knew that they're going to go after him. I mean, you know, things didn't start real well for him. He got his toe stepped on, and and the and the, and the, and the blitzes were getting there, and and every place that he went, the Rams had someone there to hit him. But I'll tell you, he did two things: he protected the ball, and when he did throw it, he threw it quickly. Numbers aren't great, but he's kept them in the game. Third and one to try to convert and can't. Leon Johnson is tackled by Ryan Pickett. And now the Rams would be well advised to take a timeout since they're going to get the ball on a punt. One of those things where you, know, you want a prevent, but you don't want to get too soft. You can see they're just using three defensive linemen, so they're going to rush three and cover with eight. Graphic illustrates how vulnerable they've been. In the last couple of minutes of either half, as Troy Edwards, the ex-Steeler, who came over at the beginning of the season, makes the catch here. Yeah, I think I think somewhere with a with a young quarterback like Mike Mark Walter in there, you don't want to play too soft. I think somewhere in here you want to pressure. Second and one. Guns it over the middle. That's caught. 48. Isaac Bruce into Bear territory and stepping out of bounds inside the 40. They'll mark it at the 39. Quarterback can throw a football. Now up front. Bears saying they were induced. Ransom away. Try to knock it down. Going right by him. First and five from the 34-yard line. Bolger going deep. And a flag is thrown as Hope makes the catch out of bounds. But there's a penalty down, and that's McMillan who is covering on the play. 26. A push off or defense. I think a lot Last of these Bears, things. Number 81 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Oh, I was just going to do is not push him down, just reroute him a little. First and 15. And that's caught. And out of bounds goes Holt for a first down of the 22 yard line. His first catch of the game. Runs with one timeout. Bolger. That's accurate. Right into the arms of Gordon. Touchdown. You could have Warner to fall, or you can have Bolger to Gordon. Take your pick. Wilkins. Pick off. Deep. Merritt. Ahmad Merritt from a couple of yards in the end zone. Gets banged down as he crosses the 30 yard line. Damon Moore hit him. Take a look at the standings now in the NFC West with the 49ers went down to the Chargers yesterday. So the Rams would be two back Arizona and Seattle at the bottom here. But the Rams in effect would be three back because the 49ers in all likelihood if these teams wind up with the same record and even if 
the Rams were to beat the 49ers in the final game of the season. Looks like the 49ers will own the tiebreaker. So the Rams, I mean, when you start 0 and 5, you've dug yourself a hole, and you're going to have to continue digging out of that hole the entire season. And this is something that isn't just a game or two or three or four. This is a whole bunch of games. First and ten from the 32 as Chandler throws and it's caught. Over the middle as Booker then slips down. Two timeouts left for Chicago and they take one of them right here. Practice in a game, he's the same all the time. And Chandler goes down again and that's five sacks and that's James Whitley for the second time. The backup corner comes in off the corner to dump Chandler. But what they're doing is they're using six defensive backs and they've been using that that defense quite a bit. The the four defensive linemen, one linebacker, Tommy Polly, with six defensive backs. Again, that's a zone dog. They overload the left side of the defense, the right side of the offense, and drop back on the other side. You know, they've you know, he was coming. We watched him earlier and and you know when I watch film I always watch the offensive line and kind of in my 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 head I, I judge them and give them grades and stuff and 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 I was impressed with Mark Colombo. I mean he was he was starting to play and that's of the of the offensive line of the five positions of the offensive line the toughest is a left tackle to play. What a feeling in pain. The uh, CEO Ted Phillips president of the Bears I mean, you're, you're in pain you're being carted off. You know you're probably done for the season after an injury like that. You know you're going to be on an operating table. I mean, it's like everything comes down to that. Yeah, once. I mean that's 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 a tough thing. And as you say, we're you know seeing it all the time. I mean this this we can say it's not a violent game. This is a violent game. And when you have big strong guys with collisions, you're going to have things happen. No one wants them to happen. Bernard Robertson takes his spot, 74, second year tackle out of Tulane, third down and 12. Flip it to Johnson and he goes nowhere as the Rams gang tackle him. And so the Rams come on at the end of the first half after Chicago had hung in with them. And down they're by gonna, one flag down here. Yep, there's a lot of stuff down. There's a helmet down, there's a flag down, and the Rams should take a timeout, and I think they have. And when you get them going backwards, you want to keep them going backwards. Oh, and then took his helmet off. Well, it's Johnson's helmet, and then Little throws it. <laughs> you can't do that to a man. And look at him. You got him. The the whistle blows, and then and then you 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 take his helmet off. Now, now that's bad enough right there. Sure. And then you pick it up and throw it. He said gives the Bears the ball back. Absolutely. With 10 seconds. First and 10. And it would have been fourth down, and then and the Rams did take time out, and the Bears would have had to have punched. Marty Booker's going to take the snap, and he's going to throw his second pass of the game if he can get it off, but he barely does, and the pass is incomplete. So Booker was through a touchdown pass last week. Throws a beautiful spiral. He was a high school quarterback in Louisiana, but there was nobody to throw to there. I think remember remember last week when when uh, Chris Chandler got hurt, Jim Miller came in and had the bad elbow and shoulder and couldn't throw, and they and and they, they had to have Marty Booker throw the ball. That was that was a big part of their offense. Here it is last week. See, it's on reverse. He comes on reverse, and as you say, he, he throws a pretty good tight tight spiral. Not only did he throw one, but Leon Johnson threw one. Two Booker. But doesn't that say it all when the, when the Bears, and we've talked about their quarterback history, you go to a wideout to throw what you hope will be a, a last gasp Hail Mary at the end of a half. And they end it with a conventional run by Johnson, and Bolger will trot off after a corner when Kurt Warner was playing at his best. I said thumb, let's make it uh, more specific. It's the index finger. Is it's, Fielded by Merritt at the goal line. Are you there? Are you there? Are you there? And Merritt brings it out to the 36 yard line as we check in with Melissa. Well, Al Bears starting left tackle Mark Colombo, their first round draft choice out of Boston College, who was carted off the field at the end of the second quarter, dislocated the patella in his left knee. He's obviously out for who knows how long. Bernard Robertson takes his spot in the lineup, and Dick Duran said that they have to get better protection for Chris Chandler, who's been sacked five times. He said, I've challenged every single player to individually do his job better. 
He is disgusted with their short yardage running game, but overall, he feels like they are still in this. Brand new left tackle, inexperienced left guard, new center taking over for Cruz. That's going to be tough to do. First and ten, and the catch is made up at the 40 yard line by Marty Booker, who's taken down by Dre Bly. Numbers through the first 30 minutes. Bolger had a 211 yard passing half, 213 total for the team right there. And despite those two turnovers, John, double the yardage, eight point lead. Yeah, and that's how the Bears have stayed in this game. I mean, they've gotten a couple plays from their, their special teams, and they haven't had any turnovers. Because they haven't had a heck of a lot of offense either. And somewhere, as Dick Jerron says, they need some pass protection, especially on second and third down. Second and five, and Jerron challenging that line to create some space, and Thomas takes the ball close to a first down up at the 46 yard line. I think it's a lot easier obviously to pass protect on first down than it is second down. And it's a lot easier on second down than it is third down or third and long. So those are the situations that they want to stay out of because if they don't you can see Chris Chandler was hit 12 times he was knocked down eight. I mean they've really gone after Chris Chandler and batted him around. First and ten. After the five yard gain from the 46 yard line. Chandler. Quick strike to Des White, and Des White makes his first catch of the game. Yeah, you can see that that's exactly what they're trying to do to help their pass protection come out and throw on first down. That's when the Rams play run tough. That's when Adam Archuleta gets up. That's when they play eight men in the box and those kinds of things. Then get the second down. Now you can run or pass. This isn't a bad passing down because if it's incomplete, you still have third and short. There's Aeneas Williams, the uh, great quarterback through the years with the Cardinals and the Rams, who's done for the season. Second down and two from the 46 yard line. Go to the ground. Thomas picks up the first down, takes it to the St. Louis 42. And now I would I would think the way they're playing this now they would come back on first down and pass again. I mean this isn't a bad rhythm type of thing to do and then if you can complete that first down pass then you can then you can get that second down run. John Shoup a very young offensive coordinator. Sending in the play to Chris Chandler 15th year seven different teams. Lovey Smith the defensive coordinator. Chandler 98 taking. Atlanta to the Super Bowl. Chris flings it and it's a little behind the intended receiver Marcus Robinson. And see and that's that's a problem with, with with that thing you know when you get the first down and you complete the pass then you can run or pass on second down and it's a pretty good thing now when when you go incomplete on first down and that's your plan then then you create second and long. You see here as you said he's trying to throw to the left here and it's just a little behind him although you, know, you can make that play. Now I would think with what the Bears are trying to do I would think after you throw incomplete on first down with this plan I think you'd come back and run on second down second and long. Play clock running down on second and ten from the forty two. Fake the draw. Buy some time to the outside caught Booker who got position on Dre Bly picks up the first at the twenty nine. Well, well, Dick Jerron said that he, he he challenged that offensive line, and I'm surprised that the Ram defense goes for a, a a play action pass on first down, but they do. And you see, they all get packed in there, and Chris Chandler has the time. I mean, he look he was looking to the right, he was trying to throw to the right, but he had a chance to slide back and throw it out here to the left to Marty Booker. Bears come up looking pretty good. Huh? Yeah, hanging in the game. Great mixture. First and ten to the 29 yard line. Pressure on Chandler gets it away and might as well have been an incomplete pass because they would have lost yardage had Thomas come up with it. Second and ten. Chris Chandler, the, the son in law of John Brody, and uh, nice to hear Chris tell us yesterday that you know, John, who suffered a stroke about a year and a half ago, making real good progress. And our best to, to John and Sue Brody. Remember John when he played with the 49ers, he was. He was a great passer. I mean, he was a great passer at Stanford, a great passer for the 49ers. And one of the, you know, how the screen pass is kind of coming back now. John Brody threw a screen pass better than anyone has ever thrown. Second and ten 
from the 29-yard line. To the outside to Robinson for a short game. That's exactly what Chris Chandler is doing. What they talked about last night is is that short drop, uh, a shorter patterns, get rid of the ball quickly, get it out of there, don't hold the ball. And I think when he was taking those hits earlier and those knockdowns and stuff is when he was holding the ball. And now, as you can see, that ball is coming out of there. One, two, three, and on that third step, that ball's out. Third and five. Four minutes into the third period, opening drive of the half. From the 29, they pick up the Archuleta Blitz. Pritchett makes the catch, and the fullback moves the chains as he gets to the 14-yard line. And I'll tell you, Chris Chandler really took a shot. You see the blitz, but the guy that they didn't block is Leonard Little. You're going to see Archuleta. He's going to come up, and then the pressure is going to come from this side right here. You see Leonard Little, just as he was outside of that pick. I mean, he got rid of the ball, but just as he throws the ball, watch Leonard Little right there. I'll tell you, you know, you know, when, you know when a quarterback gets it like that, he gets it when the guy hits it, and then when he hits the turf. From the 14. Pritchett, and he gets taken down by Tommy Polly. That's where the Rams have really stiffened this year. Red zone defense under Lovey Smith. You know, the, the Rams' statistics are so skewed when you look at the points they've given up this season. They came into the game, they gave up 196 points, but they've given up eight return touchdowns and seven conversions. That's 55 points off returns. Right, and, that, and the the reason they're so tough in this red zone is because you know they bend but don't break all over the field and then they pressure or blitz when they get in the red zone. Here they come again. Yep, second and nine. And exploiting the blitz is Thomas for the touchdown and an upcoming two-point conversion to tie the game. So the Rams show blitz. They do blitz. Villare Villarreal makes a great block. I'll tell you that was a heck of a call because it's second and long. They're going to come all the way on a on a on a, on a pass block. I, I watched Chris Valerio right there. He makes that block right there, and what a hole! I mean, Anthony Thomas could have just walked right through that thing. I gave Chris the Latin pronunciation in either tongue. Good block, good call. 14, 12. But Jerron. Opted to go for just the one. They still trail by one. And Bolger's throw is caught out in the flat by Torrey Holt. John, I mean, Jerron went to Yale. Yeah. What and, do we know? He went yeah, to Ding Dong School. And I agree with what Dick Jerron did. I mean, I would I would have done the same thing. I think that, you know, you finally get a rhythm going, you you finally get your pass protection down, and you want to do something, you know, just kick the extra point and you know how they always say, you know, in golf, like you play two or three holes and you're down or something, and someone will always say there's a lot of golf left to be played. Mm -hmm. I think Dick Jerron is just saying that there's a lot of football left to be played. Yeah, I, I still, I, I still go for the deuce there, even though maybe Dick's thinking if the Rams score and Chicago hadn't converted, and he still needs two scores. Caught out the flat here by Torrey Holt, and Holt goes to the 45-yard line. That's a first down. Had the Rams feel at the half. Melissa, what do you know? Well, Al, in the first half when Mark Bulger went into the locker room to get x-rays on his right index finger, the Rams doctors gave him a pain-killing injection. Mike Mark said that's why he was able to return. And Mark said he was so impressed with Bulger's performance when he came back, and he said he is great with that two-minute offense. That is Mark. The one adjustment that he does want to make, special teams. He said we have got to clean that up. Pain-killing injection. You know what that does? That numbs your finger. You can't feel it. You would think. I mean, that's that's amazing that, that he has thrown as well as he's had since he's had the injury with a numb right finger. First and ten, and, and didn't throw particularly well right there, and threw it behind Ricky Polo. May have been deflected. You know that surprises me. I mean, that surprises me that one that they that they did numb it, and two that you can you, you can play with that. I mean, because. You know, it's the index finger. It's this one right here, and that's where you grip and you get all this, and and it didn't seem to bother him. Though. No, right on the money. Looked yeah. good. I mean, I mean, he did. I mean, he looked as good as anyone in that in that last drive just before the half. If you joined us late, Kurt Warner had to come in when Bolger went back for those X-rays. Played one series, three and out. 
and Warner will be the starter. Hell or high water next week in Washington. Mark said no questions asked. Conwell breaks the tackle. Brown thrusts him out of bounds, but not until Conwell gets to the 38 for a first down. 17 yard pickup. Yeah, I don't know how you can have a painkill inject injection, have a numb right hand, and throw a spiral like mm. that. That tight and that accurate. This guy's something. Now they say, I know Kurt Warner's going to start next week, but I'll guarantee you that there's going to be a quarterback controversy, and it has to be. I mean, how do you take a kid that's playing like this and not play him? That's that's tough. I know who Kurt Warner is and all those things, but that's that's a tough decision. But as you said, Mike Marks has already made it. From the 38, Mike said it wasn't that tough. Flag down. Full start. 70 offense, five yards, still first down. And they, they're going to give Warner the job back with three road games. They go to Washington, who may start Sonny Jurgensen for all we know at quarterback this week. Then they go to Philadelphia without McNabb. Then a tough one in Kansas City. Yeah, and, you know, the thing where the controversy comes up is say that Kurt Warner goes in, but say he throws a couple interceptions. Say they get a, uh, a couple touchdowns behind. Do they just keep going with them, or do they bring in a bulger? That's where that thing won't go away. First and 15, and that's dropped by Holt a little bit behind him. What about that change of quarterbacks and the whole situation? Here's what Bolger had to say. It's not fun ever going back to the bench, but you know when you have Kurt Werner out there taking your spot, it's not some guy that hasn't done anything. It's two-time NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. So uh, you know before the season, if you would ask if there's a controversy between me and Kurt, you know I think 99% of us have said you're crazy. So uh, just to be in this position, I'm, I'm thankful, and uh, you know that's the right decision. Kurt has to go back in. And he's sincere about it. We talked to him yesterday. It's not just empty verbiage. Second down and 15 now. Play clock all the way down. And no play here. They're going to get a delay. John, if you were coaching the Rams, you were back on the field and you're coaching the Rams. What do you? What? Offense, five yards, still second down. What do you do in Washington next week? In this situation, well, I thought you were going to say, "What do I do? I do here next week." I don't know. I don't know in Washington. No, no. I'm, I mean, what do you do if you're the Rams oh, in Washington? Oh, if I'm yeah. if I'm the Rams, I would I would continue to play Bulger. I think that that the guy is so hot, and the Rams' offense have such a great rhythm right now that I wouldn't I wouldn't destroy that. I know Kurt Warner is my quarterback. I'd probably say that, but I would continue to play Mark Bulger. Second down and 20 from the 48. Bolger flips it to the outside. Blocked by Troy Edwards. As long as we're on Washington. Now, if you're in Washington, do you start Jurgensen next week or do you go with Billy Kilmer? Yeah, I've always thought that, that, that Jurgensen was a better starter. You know, and then you save Kilmer and you and, and you bring him in later, kind of to throw him off balance because. Sonny, you know what he's going to do, where he's going to throw one of the great passes of all time. And then Kilmer comes in, you know, and, and he'll throw him kind of lopsided on you. But Norm Van Brocklin, the old Dutchman, yeah. I'll tell you, he was, he was one of the great ones. Led the Philadelphia Eagles to a championship in 1960. And then he went to, or before that, a Ram. I mean, that was one of the great quarterback controversies ever. Third down and 12. And breaking through is Mike Caldwell, the ex Eagle, for a big sack. Yeah, and that was perfectly timed by Caldwell. What you do is you just kind of wait until they start their block, and you're going to see that's that's a nickel, and, and, and Caldwell is right here in the middle. Now, now you have a three-man line, and you wait, and you and you have your nose tackle go one way. See the nose tackle goes to the left and takes two blockers then that needs leaves none for Caldwell and he comes right up the middle. I think that was on Andy McCullum. Mitch Berger. Leon Johnson's going to let it go. And it takes a good bounce for the Bears. They'll get the ball out at the 20 yard line. Al Michaels John Madden Melissa Clark. Five and a half to go third period good ball game. Rams up. 14-13. The Bears have it from their 20. Thomas tripped on his own teammate in the backfield up to the 20-yard line. Line of scrimmage, second and ten. Yeah, you know, we talked about how the how the Bears were going to throw the shorter passes, and you'll get rid of the ball quickly, and you'll see 
Here, this this is where Chris Chandler has done most of the damage. Five for six, you know, between the line of scrimmage and 15 yards deep. And five for six, six for six in the middle, one for one on the right. He's only thrown four passes deeper than 15 yards. But that was their plan, and it's not a bad plan. Second and 11. Chandler pressure from the backside, but he could feel it and steps up and hits the tight end John Davis to the 25, setting up third and five. Yeah, that's when the when the middle of the line has to do a good job. As you say, the pressure comes from the outside. Now, now that won't bother you as long as you can step up. Where they were getting in trouble earlier is the pressure would come from the outside and then he would go to step up. See, you have to keep this solid in here. Now, if this is solid and stay solid, then you can step up. But when that collapses upon you and you can't step up, that's when you get in trouble. Third down and five from the 25. Crowd imploring their defense. And the defense answers. Adam Archuleta with a sack. Six sacks of Chandler tonight. And no one got on Adam Archuleta at all. Sunday night on ESPN. This drive begins from midfield with Gordon. The third round pick. The rookie from North Dakota State. Staying inbounds all the way down to the 19 yard line. Push a button, get a spin. That's what he learned from Marshall Falk. For Marshall Falk, who probably will be ready by Sunday, gets the ball again. Gerlacher takes him down. A little bit more on Lamar Gordon. Let's go to Melissa. Sitting up there with uh, John Shaw tonight. Very proud of the man he found on second down and 12. Bolger goes to the end zone and it is incomplete. Intended for Isaac Bruce, covered by Mike Brown. Although he doesn't look like he's going to get any help on this play. Erlacher's coming. Erlacher's got him. Came off the edge, lined up. At what would be the right end position, in effect, kept sneaking up there, and nobody picked them up. You saw it, and there was no way that Mark Bolcher saw it. He said he usually plays linebacker. Here he comes to the outside, and he's going to come right around here. He started in the middle, goes to the outside, and and no one accounted for him. It was a three-man line, and they were going to they had their slide going to the right, so they were blocking it. Like a three man line, and then the fourth guy that came was Brian Erlacher. The Rams will eschew the opportunity to kick a, what would be about a 49 yard field goal, and instead it's Mitch Berger lining up the punt, and they might as well take a delay call here because if you're going to push it, you could use the extra five yards. Seven game losing streak, Jim Hannafin going over things with his offensive line as they rest. And the Bears now from the 19 yard line first down. Out in the flat caught by Stanley Pritchett taken down by the ever present Archuleta. Hey have you over the years been a cankle watcher. No I'm a cankle watcher from way back. And Jeff Scanina right there has the biggest cankle. You see where your calf comes down here and it joins your ankles. Mm -hmm. That area is called cankles. You know, you know where you don't have and and those are the biggest cankles I've ever seen in my life. Can you get canker sores <laughs> on your cankles. No 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 you, you get uh, Achilles tendon <laughs> things because your tendon goes right up through your cankle. Second down and nine. Anthony Thomas stopped by Archuleta. I'm a cankle watcher from way back now now, now here's a guy with no cankles. I mean you look. Here, I mean the calf, the ankle. There's, there's nothing going on there. So that, that has to be a kicker. That has to be Berger. I'm, I'm, I think that it's got to be Mitch Berger. Am I right, Freddie? It's In either the truck. It's either Berger. Thank you, sir. <laughs> that was a good guess. Yeah. You know, you're the, the opposite of cankles is what you know good. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be back. We think after this end of three in St. Louis. All kinds of good stuff. I'll tell you, here's Adam Archuleta. They, they better get him blocked because he's been blitzing in these situations. Third and six as we start the fourth. And that is caught, but shy of the first down by Robinson. Needed six, got four, and they're forced to punt. Whitley covering. That time Adam Archuleta was up there like he was going to blitz, and they, they dropped back in coverage. With their eyes half closed. 
First and ten from the 18. Gordon. You know, I was watching Mark Bulger the other night at practice, and, and he reminded me so much of Kurt Warner. I think that you know the teaching and coaching is such a big part. You watch them; they both have the same same stance. They both have have their left foot back. You see, here's Kurt Warner now on top. I watch how they set. They both set the same way. They have the same angle. Watch you carry the ball. Bulger's a little lower, but watch how the ball comes up, and as it comes up, it comes right out. Both of them have a very quick release, and they're both very accurate. And when you break it down like that, they look a lot alike. And they're playing in a, in a dream system for a quarterback, as that one is deflected and then caught by a ram. It's Bulger who gets it back, so he deflects it and then gets a reception as well. Who was that that did that a couple years ago and got a touchdown? Brad Johnson did it. Brad Johnson, yeah. But he. He threw a touchdown pass and caught a touchdown pass. Here, Bulger throws a pass and catches a pass. He's lucky that Keith Trailer didn't get it. Keith Trailer is the guy that knocked it up in the air. Remember last year, Keith Trailer intercepted one. Remember him going down the sideline? Sure. That was one of the great sights of last year. <laughs> Classic. I tell you, yeah, and that's and that's how he got it. He he had an interception and and he came very close. He couldn't locate the ball in space. Bulger's so nonplussed after that. They have to take a time on for the night and in civvies. Lamar Gordon is there, but a big forced fumble by Roosevelt Colvin. Cut Chicago in the game early, and they're down by one. Third and five after the Rams timeout, and they convert here as Ricky Prohl makes the catch. The 12th year Prohl out of Wake Forest, still going strong. And you know he he does that. I mean, if you need a play, a big third down play. I remember Dick Vermeil when he was coaching. He said that, that Ricky Prohl doesn't start, but he's one of the most valuable players on our team. And and these are the type of plays that Ricky Prohl needs. You know, makes. I mean, you need a play, you need a first down, you look for number 87. Don't the Tampa Bay Bucks know that from the NFC Championship game in in '99? First and ten. Bulger escapes the R.W. McCorder's near sack and then is able to complete it to Isaac Bruce. And Bruce takes it inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. What a big play by Mark Bulger. I mean, those are the those are the kind of plays that the big strong quarterbacks make. Mark Bulger is not a big strong guy, but all you have to do when you feel that pressure coming is dip your shoulder a little. You see, he feels it. He dips his shoulder, then he spins out, and again, he's not looking at the rush. Watch, he doesn't look at the rush. He doesn't look at the line. He's always looking downfield for a receiver. At 48 minutes into the game, as you look at the frustrated McWhorters, Bolger has a 300 yard night. Exactly 300. 17 to 26. To the ground again. To Gordon. A hard yard. So Bulger looking for all the world like a guy in his fifth year instead of his fifth game. Since 1950 over the past 52 years there it is no quarterback has ever thrown for more yards in their first five starts than this guy. That's a pretty eclectic list. Blake Holgaboom Gerback Testaverde. That's that's a word for it eclectic. I mean you expect <laughs> to see names like Elway and Marino and those kind of guys up there and. That's not the list. But how does a guy have five games like this then not start in the six? Yeah. Second down and nine. Pressure again. Bulger throwing it away. Conwell in the area. Third down. Yeah, I'll say one thing about this Chicago Bear team, though. They've hung in there. I mean, I mean, the Bulger will get something going. I mean, he has the yardage, he'll get a play going, but this but this Bear team will always come up with a play. I mean, they come up with a defensive play. They come up with a pressure. They create long yardage. You know, they get a special teams play. You know, you think a team that you know has lost seven in a row would would, would, would be a little down. These guys have a heck of a lot of fight in them. And coming off a game in which they blew a 21-point lead last week at home, or sort of home in Champaign, third down and nine. Falls your throws, caught at the 31-yard line by Edwards. And Edwards takes it to the 28, and that's close to a first. The ex Steeler. And they like they like Troy Edwards here in the 
St. Louis Rams because you know when they got Terrence Wilkins they thought that he would take Oz Hakeem's place and for some reason he's really never picked up the offense. So then they got Troy Edwards and he has so he's become that that Oz Hakeem of this year. They're going to measure. It also appeared as if he got a great spot. They spot the ball at the 28 yard line. There's the catch. Ooh, that looked like he was a little short there of the yeah. yellow line. Of course, the yellow line not being official, and they gave him the spot just across the yellow line. Just across, and by about a third of the length of the football, they get a first down. That's one of those, it's a challengeable call for Jerome, but I mean, where in the world is Austin going to put the ball beside where he just put it? Not worth the challenge. I, I would agree with that at that point. First and ten at the 28 yard line. Ten minutes to play. Bolger incomplete. Tended for Hodgins. There's the playoff picture at the moment. Packers and Bucks each eight and two. So they would get the buys. Remember the third and fourth best division winners will have to play in a wild card game right now that's the Eagles and the 49ers which by the way is our matchup next Monday Saints and Falcons if the season ended right now they would go in the Giants would just miss and the Rams if they go to five and five tonight still fighting an uphill battle second down and ten from the 28 yard line. Bulger. Bruce taken down at the eight yard line by Mike Brown 20 yards and Isaac Bruce tonight has caught a half dozen balls for 141 yards you know what they're doing they're going maximum protection look see they have the tight end in here and then they just keep this side solid they keep a back in here so they're keeping two extra blockers in there to give Mark Bulger that type of time to find Isaac Bruce. You feel sometimes that Isaac Bruce just sits around the first quarter, the second quarter, and the third and fourth quarter comes alive. Like but last week. We talk about maximum protection. That last picture was a picture of maximum protection. First and goal. Take to Gordon to the end zone. Hold in. Ricky Pro touchdown. Only two receivers running the pattern, and the two bear safeties ran into each other. Green and Brown. Turning the Bears blue as Merrick brings it back up to the 25 yard line. Bolger tonight, 300. Who would have thought? Edit the promo copy on the fly here. From the 25 yard line, first and 10 for Chicago. St. Louis by eight. Thomas taken down. Let's watch that touchdown again. Here's Ricky Pro. Here's Holt over on this side, and they're just going to run crossing patterns. We'll watch it here in the clicker, and we'll see as he starts to cross, and we just stop it right here. The Bears, the two safeties, knocked each other out, and Ricky Pro comes out the other side. In fact, Mike Green and Mike Brown still don't wear, know where Ricky Pro came mm -hmm. from or where each other came from. Second down and ten. That's knocked down. Low throw. Ryan Pickett is right there. I think one of the big things with Ryan Pickett is they is they moved him to nose tackle, and I think. I, I think that's his position. They were trying to play him at what they call the three technique. And he's better right in here where he's on the guard in the center and just getting a push straight up the middle because he's playing the run well and he has a good feel for that. Getting up the middle and taking away a lane with your hand. Third and ten. Chandler, and by the shirt, 
And that's incomplete. Leonard Little got there again, and Chandler is shaken. Gets up gimpily. And Leonard Little is the guy. I mean, he's the he's the speed out there, and if you can get him outside and on those speed rushes, these big tackles have a tough time. You know, that's that's the way football's going now. The the offensive linemen have gotten so big. I mean, they're weighing like 340, 350 pounds, and they're having trouble with these smaller speed rushers. Maynard. Fair caught by Wilkins at the 30. Boy, unbelievable. First and 10 from the 31. <laughs> Gordon stopped at the line of scrimmage by Trailer, and let's check in with Melissa. Well, Al, I talked to a number of the Rams and asked them what the turning point was this season, and they all point to one thing. Before the Oakland game, which is when the winning streak began, Torrey Holt addressed the team, and he said, we have to start having fun again. And I mean everyone, from the top of the organization to the equipment manager. When you're filling up those water bottles, I want smiles on your faces. He said, picture yourself at a party. You're wearing your best suit. Your favorite song comes on. You are on top of the world. That's the way you need to act when you take the field and now that's still the way they're acting now. Well it's tough to do at 0 and 5 but they're on their way to being 5 and 5 right now as Bruce gets there along with the ball and Jerry Azuma at the same time and Jerry is down. You know and that was the thing that all the Ram players and coaches were talking about is in fact Mike March said that from the Super Bowl he kind of had a hangover you know after they lost that and he was tense and intense and and you know and everything in the team felt it and he felt it. Then they just got to a point and they said, we aren't having fun anymore. We have to go out and have fun. And that's exactly what they've been doing since the Oakland game. Yeah, Mark said, look, it was my fault is what he told us yesterday. He said, I was putting too much pressure on everybody. And pressure on himself, too. I mean, you, you were bringing that stuff all the time. And Third and 11, and that's incomplete. You know the other amazing thing, John, about the Rams is they have backups going tonight with Bolger. And with Gordon, but these are not the second stringers. These are the third stringers. We keep forgetting that it was Warner. Then it was Jamie Martin because he he had a gimpy knee that gave Bolger the chance. And then Trunk Candidate was a number one choice in 2000 to back up Falk, but clearly he has fallen out of favor. Hasn't even played tonight. So you've got Lamar Gordon. You have two guys who are number three in the depth chart, not even number two. And you know what that's all about? That's all about assistant coaches. You know that the, the Ram assistant coaches are great teachers. Leon Johnson. Up to the 36 yard line. Because even even Greg Blosh from the Chicago Bears was talking about and he said I don't know how they teach all that stuff that they do. Edward Jones Dome. Chicago first and 10. From the 36 yard line Chandler. Gain of about seven. You know, tonight, tonight I'm leaving. I'm going to be going out 70 and then up 80. But you know what's happening tonight? Meteor showers. I just heard that. So if I'm, and I heard local time, it's like between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I'll stay up that late or get up that early, but. You, you have to. You can't beat a meteor shower. No, you're going to be what? How, what, how many what? times do you see a meteor shower in your life? This is supposed to be like the best one for the next hundred years. Second and two. And that's caught down the sideline by Stanley Pritchett. Big catch. And the Bears, and I described them before as resilient, are exactly that. You know, Stanley Pritchett has been a pretty big part of this passing game. I know even in watching films, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll put him in and and he's a he's a fullback he's a running back but he's also like a tight end you know they get him up there and they get him out of the backfield and remember earlier they tried to get him on a swing in fact they finally got that play on him that they tried to do earlier. Here are the Bears now at the 29 yard line. Slow in getting the play in and the Bears are going to be forced to spend a timeout. First and ten so that nets the Rams about six yards. Well, see, then if they could get a blitz and throw him for a loss here, they can knock him out of field goal range if they haven't already. From the 35-yard line, first and 10. Tackle.
kind of. I don't know, John. If I'm the Bears right now, I'm not even thinking as a flag is thrown. I'm not even thinking about a field goal because you're still going to have to get a touchdown. Even if you get a field goal, it's a five-point game. You're still going to have to get it in the end zone. I think. I think with five Holding minutes. 58 offense, 10 yards, repeat first down. Now they're out of field goal that, range. That that was a big play there. But I would think with five minutes, 51 seconds, if you could get if if you could get a field goal attempt within five minutes. I think that I would kick the field goal because then you have an opportunity to kick off hold and get the ball back or you have an opportunity to try an onside kick remember that's how the Rams won last week I mean they scored then they got an onside kick and then they went in and, and scored again. I think I think it's going to depend a lot on, on where, what you need on fourth down. First if they get to that point first and 20 from the 45 yard line Chandler. And it is not intercepted inbounds. It's Dre Bly coming up with it, but out of bounds. It's not intercepted. It was still a heck of a catch by Dre Bly. You know, and then we go back. I know what you're thinking. You go back to that two points. And, you know, the Bears should have come with two points. Then you wouldn't have to worry about about field goal and, and, and touchdown. Right. You see, Marty Booker, after this play, he stays down. He's still down. He's hurt. Ray Bly made a heck of a reception there. Marty Booker it looked like he got his left leg caught up in Dre Bly's leg. Yeah. Step or maybe San Diego took one away from him. But the Jets got back to 500. Raiders won last night. Second and 20 from the 45 yard line. They give it to Thomas, and he only picks up three to the 42. Stopped there by Tommy Polly. You know again getting back to that challenge in that five yards it doesn't seem like a lot because it was first down but but it still created something I mean it, 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 it took the Bears and they were going for it and made them go backward and then and then they get a penalty and then you know, you know and now they can't get back to that original line of scrimmage I mean they, the the this, this Ram defense just has this bear offense going backwards and it stopped the flow of the game too and that didn't help the Bears third down and 17. From the 42 yard line. Booker's back in. Chandler on a slant that's Des White to the 33. So if you're Jerron, you're thinking about a 50 yard field goal to draw it to within five, and he's going to send the field goal unit out there. And that's exactly what he's going to do. But you know, we talk about guys unloading. What's Adam Archuleta on this one? Number 31, and he's going to come in from right here. Now watch—he just reads that thing, and he just zeroes in. And you talk about no helmet to helmet—he just got shoulder pad to shoulder pad. 50-yard attempt. The real downside for the Bears here: if he misses it, the Rams get the ball at the 40-yard line. This guy's good. He is really, he's good. really good. He goes through that whole thing and gets all that routine going. And then, what do you say about that golf swing? You, you swing with your big muscle. Your big muscles, right? Big muscles. Big muscles. He, 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 Edinger gets his big muscle in there. He, everything he said is like golf, and you, you know your kick is like your your golf swing, and and he gets that thing going. Watch him here. He starts this, then he gets that little thing, and one, two. And then he does a twist, <laughs> and he still has one more twist. There, he has that twist. But see, now he gets that torque, torque, torque and yep. big muscle. Is that what you do? You know, the thing about this kid is, almost every time I, I watch him kick a field goal, I mean, it's it's right down Broadway. Yeah. It's right down I, the middle. I mean, you talk about splitting the pipes. Yep. He, he split, split the pipes exactly. Now with 3:48, and they have two timeouts. I don't think that they have to kick an onside kick here. Nope. I would I would say that they, they're lining up like they're going to kick an onside. The Rams will come out in what we call a hands team or onside prevent. And I think I would get them in that onside prevent and then kick it deep. In fact, the Rams better get someone deep. They don't have anyone deep right now. Nobody. The but, deepest guys at the 30 yard line. Yeah, but, yeah, I would I would just I would just kick the ball deep. Because you know you have to feel the kickoff. Remember that. So if you kick the ball deep, 
the Bears could go and recover it deep. That's exactly what yep. he did. And there's no ran back there except Yo Murphy who has to retreat and then Murphy has to get out of the way because Dre Bly goes back and take it away and Leon Johnson gets down there to tackle him at the 16 yard line. So they have two timeouts defensively plus the two minute warning is on the Bears defense. Earl Acker and company from the 15 yard line to get the ball back. Gordon to spring him out and does he get out of bounds. He does not. Brian Erlacher and Roosevelt Colvin. Yeah, see. They have to think in terms of getting a first down. The Bears defense. Again, stopping him from getting a first down. They empty the backfield, second down and nine from the 16 yard line. Four man rush. Bulger flushed out. Throws incomplete. Perfect for the Bears. Just perfect. Stops the clock. No gain. Conserves the timeout. From the 16 yard line. Bolger chased out. Throws. Diving at the 26. He caught it for a first down. Torrey Holt. <laughs> Big play, Torrey Holt. Yeah, there's have to stop him from getting the first down. They need at least one more first down to be able to run the clock out. Gordon to the 29. Chicago's going to take its time out here. And then it'll be second down. And then it'll be third down if they don't pick up the first at the two minute warning with the clock stoppage. Next week. Yeah. Second and seven. Gordon. He's going to come up a little short of the first down, and that'll take us to the two minute warning. So that's going to stop the clock for the last time, and it's as simple as this. If the Rams get another first down, they can end the game. It's going to get showered upon. There's, there's our trailer. Heading west. Yep, we got them all lined up. We got trucks yep. and trailers and horse trailers. Horse trailers. The whole deal. Fans. All lined all lined up ready to head out west. We're going west, but our man Fred Gadelli, our illustrious producer, and Jill Gadelli will welcome into the world tomorrow a baby girl. Freddie? <coughs> Freddie, get used to that sound. <coughs> yep, and our best wishes <laughs> to both of them. Yep. Be a great day for you tomorrow. Third down and one from the 34 yard line. And Gordon doesn't get the first. Ooh. So Chicago's going to get one last gasp. Mike Green comes up to save the day, at least temporarily. And again, we talked that uh, with with the change of possession. Now the time, the, the clock will continue to run until the change of possession. And then when when the ball is kicked and, and returned, then the clock will stop until the next down. So the Bears, without having any timeout, will get a change of possession timeout. And Mitch Berger will wait. They'll snap it at the last possible moment. Play clock is at 10. Shit. Good high deep kick. Fielded at the 12 by Leon Johnson. And Leon brings it back to the 24. So a field goal does Chicago no good. They'll have to go 76 yards in 67 seconds or less. And the thing that they have to do again you have to think of throwing the ball up the field because you know they're going to they're going to stop you from getting out of bounds. Now that's the first thing you'd like to do complete the ball get it out of bounds. But if you can't get a first down so then the quarterback can come up and spike it and you give it down away but you still have three. The worst thing you can do of course is get sacked. The second worst thing is an incomplete well a, a, a short pass and a tackle would be the second worst thing. So the ball now at the 25 they have to go 75 yards after the spot in a minute seven. The pressure Chandler he throws it a little bit behind Booker and then Dre Bly kicks it away the Rams came close to an interception. Yeah, I mean now I think I think in these next shots I think you have to throw passes beyond 10 yards again you, know, you try and get out of bounds but again if you get a first down you can get a spike. Second and ten from the twenty five.
Chandler sack seven sacks Damian Lewis with the magnificent seven yep, and that's that's the thing that they could afford or they could least afford as a sack and as I said they've been going after Chris Chandler all night I thought the offensive line did a better job in the second half but now they have to throw every down and they're going to come all out they need 15 and that's tipped away by Dre Bly so Chicago down to its last gasp. Dre Bly's playing a lot better. I mean, he's he's playing with a lot more confidence, and you know, and he's a pretty good player. But this is what they have to do. You can work the whole field, but you have to throw it beyond that first down marker so that you can get first down. You know, you just don't have to work the outside. Just work anywhere. But now, now you're talking about it has to be at least a 20-yard pass darn near. Bears have to get to the 35-yard line. Or the game is over. And the game will be over. Into traffic, into a lot of traffic, intended for Ahmad Merritt. And so the Bears will equal their longest losing streak 